right I'm getting calls by how my peoples is dead And I ain't hit one of they funeral shit I've been feeling like a zombie man All the days just started to blend I wish I can go and press my wine And just start all over again I've been in and out of therapy And I'm hanging on by a thread So I'm living for right here and now Cause I feel like I'm living And what is that? How, tell us how you did that to your tongue Jeff. I split my tongue with uh, I had a tongue piercing mm -hmm. And then I put a string through it And then I, I took the string And I tightened it And I started sawing the, the Pulling it and sawing it And it split and why, why would you do that? When I went because my birthday is June thirtieth, I was like my golden birthday. I was gonna turn into a freak. I wanted I wanted white gold fangs um, on my teeth. I wanted fangs. I wanted my tongue split, and I wanted my ears pierced, uh, pitted. Like I wanted them like shaped like a bat or, or whatever. <laughs> because um, I'm in the ICP, like in Saint Cloud Posse, and the brittle box is uh, my my card, I guess you could say, and it's it's like a snake clown. It's like a snake clown. Okay. So I wanted that, and my entire life I was always into horror movies and uh, freaky ass things and stuff like that. So I want I wanted to be a real vampire. I dreamt about it. I read a lot of books, uh, and it's just when I turned thirty, I wanted to be a vampire. I wanted to be a, a clown. These two handsome young black man just wanted to go to a party. But unfortunately for them, the party continued after their death in the most vile way I have ever heard. It was a party where anything goes. Hello, my name is Holly, and this is The Murder She Shed, the place where we analyze a true crime case and discuss the dead right in my she shed. The Hickory Street Murders is a truly bizarre case with not much coverage on YouTube. Four white individuals gruesomely murdered these two black men, and one of the murders was released already. I believe it is a case that needs to be discussed more due to the victim's rights to be heard. And so, that is my job on the murder she shed, to give victims of rarely heard crimes a voice. So before we begin, make sure you hit that like and subscribe in order to get the victims' voices out to more people in this big YouTube world. Also, I need to give you a warning of violence and sexual content on this video. So that was your chance to exit stage left if this material will be too sensitive to you. And also behind me is my little German Shepherd, Simon. Actually, no, that's Max. Max is my little lamb. And I guess he's decided to join us today because his daddy's at work. He's a daddy's boy. And then Simon is right below me. Who knows if they will be nice while I tell this story. That is a whole different story. Eric Glover and Terrence Rankins were 22-year-old best friends from Joliet, Illinois. They had been inseparable since they met five years before. Eric graduated from Joliet Central High School and had made the honor roll and participated in football, wrestling, and track. Terrence was said to have been a very outgoing, loving, fun person. And he graduated from Juliet West High School. On January 10th of 2013, they were invited to a party on Hickory Street by Bethany McKee, 18 years of age, whom had recently reconnected with Terrence on Facebook. Bethany had a 15-month-old baby girl, and at that time, both were staying with 18-year-old Eliza Mazzaro, whom lived on the second floor of her father's house. So, as Terrence and Eric were driving to this so-called party, they could have never guessed what four evil people actually had planned that evening. First, they stopped by and got some alcohol to bring to the party before they made their way to Hickory Street. After getting to Eliza's house, 
They were greeted by Eliza, Bethany, and two men, 24-year-old Joshua Minor and 19-year-old Adam Landerman. Joshua was Eliza's boyfriend and had a violent streak. When he was younger, he had even choked his younger sister to unconsciousness after she changed the channel on the TV. The two joined the group and sitting around playing video games and drinking. The group had already pre-planned to rob Terrence and Eric due to wanting money for cigarettes and alcohol. Yes, but personally, I just think that it was just an excuse for wanting to murder them. The killers had set up a signal beforehand to let Eliza and Bethany know when it was going to go down so they can leave with the baby. Oh, isn't that nice of them? The girls told Terrence and Eric they were going downstairs to grab some more drinks. So, after the girls walked downstairs, a loud noise woke Eliza's father, and he got up, and Eliza told her father that the two men upstairs were just moving a TV. Her father threatened to call the cops if it didn't quieten down upstairs. Eliza told him that she would go upstairs and tell the two men to be quiet. So she walked up, but the door was locked. Through the door, Eliza heard her boyfriend say, Da, da, and then the noise quieted down. Shortly after that, Eliza and Bethany then left in order to take Bethany's daughter to stay with someone. Behind that locked door, Joshua was choking Terrence to death while Adam murdered Eric. I will let Joshua Minor describe the choking for you in an interview done by reporter Joseph Hosey from prison. Warning graphic language. So I, I take uh, Terrence, I take Terrence. And I put him in the headlock. I'm still hitting him and everything. And his buddy comes up and puts him like, shoves him down, so I'm back at my knee. And oh, I've got Terrence in front of me, and he kicks me in the face, like, fucks me, like, fucks my face up. And I'm yelling at Adam, I'm like, man, get this motherfucker off me, get this dude off me. What the fuck, where you at? Get him on. And uh, me and dude were fighting and everything. Uh, I'm still holding him. And then. Uh, dude comes up and hits me again, and Adam finally like takes him, pulls him back into the living room. I don't know what they do, and then I finally I'm holding him, and finally he stops moving. And from what I heard uh, in the uh, the trial, like I, I guess I was holding him like way too long, because he was still moving. In my mind, he was still moving, but with the lady was saying he was uh, spazzing out or whatever. So he was still moving, and then when he stopped moving, I laid him down. Then I went into the living room to check on Adam and the other guy. While Adam's on the other guy's back, holding his neck back like that. And he's like, oh, blah, blah, fuck, I heard his neck snap, he vomited out my coat, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm like, well, get off. Yeah. So I take dude with the dreads, uh, Eric. I take uh, his head, and I shake his head, and I stick my fingers up his nose to see if he's breathing. See, he's breathing. Well, he ain't breathing, so I drop his head. I'm like, oh, fuck. I run in the kitchen. I start kicking on uh, uh, Terrence. I'm like, dude, get up. Bitch, get up. He doesn't move. So I pick his head up and all oh, shit. I see blood coming out of his nose and mouth. So I drop his head. I'm like, fuck, fuck, fuck. No. Uh, Lisa was trying to come in the door. I told her to stop. Wait, wait outside the door. She's like, what's going on? I'm like, don't sh just shut up. Don't worry about it. Did you see how he downplayed his actions? Sickening. And unfortunately for Eric and Terrence, it was only the beginning of the vile acts done to these victims. After Eliza and Bethany returned and walked upstairs, when they entered, Eric's body was stacked on top of Terrence's body. The men took $120 out of Terrence's pocket in order to pay for more cigarettes. I would be embarrassed to say I murdered two men for $120.
Meanwhile, Bethany was downstairs searching Eric's vehicle and stole several items, including compact discs, stuffed animals, and a pair of baby boots. They moved the bodies into the bedroom, and Joshua punched both victims in the head to prove they were dead to the girls. Afterwards, Adam was described as surfing on the bodies of both victims, and Joshua would state later, as Adam stood on the bodies, they made a gasping sound like a zombie. Then Bethany decided to hit them in the head with liquor bottles and kick them. I guess Eliza felt left out, so she then hit them with liquor bottles too. I have heard racial slurs were said, but unclear of exactly what was said. Although, I have heard that Adam said, if you were picking cotton, this wouldn't have happened as he kicked the bodies. Disgusting. Makes my stomach sick. The group left the residence and bought cigarettes and drugs with the money taken off of Terrence's dead body. When they returned, they used the drugs. At some point, the girls were worried that Terrence and Eric would turn into zombies. So Joshua tied up both victims together, hogtied them, and then put plastic bags over their face. Eliza, whom had always apparently wanted to try necrophilia, suggested to Joshua that they should have SEX on top of the victim's bodies. Yes, I said, on top of the victim's bodies. And Adam decided to join them in this degrading act. According to Joshua, he was not able to perform. They literally had a threesome, or tried to, on top of these young men's bodies. What kind of disgusting person does that take? Joshua had discussed with the group how he was going to skin off Terrence's face and use it as a face mask. The group laughed when he said this, that he would skin off this man's handsome face and put it on him like some kind of disgusting serial killer. He said he was going to pull out some of the victim's teeth and save them as souvenirs too. At this point, Joshua texts a person named Chicago to pay and pick up Eric's vehicle. Here is a piece of that interview where Joshua is discussing getting rid of the bodies. Uh, the whole planning and everything. Everybody had their own little idea of getting rid of the bodies and everything. And I was thinking of NCIS, criminal minds, all that, all that uh, CSI crime lab shit with a piece of piece of my hair on the body was going to fuck us over. But we could come to realize after we calmed down everything, like the, the, the way JPD, okay, they ain't going to care that much about two black people. The only reason that it's such a big thing is because... Uh, it was two black guys and four white people. And technically, the uh, Bethany girl, she's like half Mexican. And the Lisa girl, she's part Korean. So it wasn't four white people. But anyways, yeah, it, it like blows my mind. Man. It's such a big deal that these four white people killed these two black people. If it was the other way around, it would never even hit the news. It, like some, some black guys killed some white guys. It never would even hit the news. And it's just outrageous that they're looking at me like I'm a Charles Manson type shit. And how the fuck can I be that if I'm more slow-witted than half these motherfuckers around here? <laughs> I know. Totally disgusting. Adam had brought bleach, garbage bags, and tools from his house. Adam and Joshua put one of the bodies on top of the garbage bag because they thought... Bethany's father was going to come over and dismember the body. Bethany had apparently called her dad about advice 
on how to dispose of bodies. I am unclear why she thought her dad might have some advice on that, but he actually just called the police. They knew that they had to wait for Eliza's father to leave for work before they could dispose of the body. So, they just sat down and started playing video games, just like any other day. The autopsy would determine there were no defensive injuries on Eric and Terrence's hands after the bags were removed from the victim's head. It was noted that there was an abundant amount of bloody fluid collected in the bag. There were multiple lacerations and bruising to Eric and Terrence's body and face from blunt force trauma. The ME could not tell if they were inflicted before or after death, but determined they did not contribute to the victim's death. Their cause of death was strangulation. At the beginning of this case, I told you guys that one of the convicted murders is walking free. Would you have guessed it was the necrophile, Eliza Mazzaro? While the others received life, Due to Eliza's testimony against the others, she was only given 10 years but was released after three years due to good behavior. And as of 2018, is walking the streets with you and me. My heart goes out to the family and friends of the victims. What was done to these young men were truly horrifying and disgusting. Guys, be careful out there because you never know who you will cross paths with. Well, guys, be blessed. Have a great week. And just remember, if you enjoyed my telling of true crime, to just hit that subscribe button. And my bloopers are now. Love y'all. Bye. And walked upstairs. Walked upstairs. I feel like I went shh, like my, my, like my, went shh, shh, like that's going to hurt y'all's ears. Right. And Joshua, and Josh, why can't I say Joshua today? There's like three birds having an orgy up in the tree. It's a bad sign, isn't it? Never mind. It even said that. Okay. Max, you're itching. And you stop that itching. He's on one outside in just a few minutes. Apparently, he wanted to pull out the victim's teeth to teeth. Is teeth a word? I don't think teeth is a word. The autopsy word. Here goes that little Simo. Yeah, little Simo. Peek his eyes up here. Oh no. Here comes the Max. He's cute too. He's got little green eyes. Come here, Max. I want to see you too. I don't know if you can see his green eyes, but he's, a, he's 120 pounds, Max is huge lab. Yeah, this is what I'm dealing with every day. Every day. Oh, shit. Oh, God dang. You guys gotta stop doing that to me. You give me a heart attack. My vicious dog. Trick me. Could have been a coyote. Sometimes they chase the coyotes when the ducks are getting chased by coyotes. And they're pretty good about saving my ducks. They've saved them before from blunt force trauma. Every time I go to read this, you're there. Max the Lab likes to kill frogs out of my pond. So he stands in the pond half the day. Their cause of death was strangulation. Strangle, strangulation, strangulation. Ah! Repeat, repeat, rewind. That didn't mean for you to come over here.